Let's talk about triangles. Everyone loves them. There are lots of famous facts about triangles, the foremost of which being the Pythagorean theorem about right triangles, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Today we're going to talk about a fact which actually holds for all triangles. The sum of the three interior angles is always 180 degrees. You may also remember a more general fact for any polygon. For any n-gon, a polygon with n sides, the sum of its interior angles is 180 times n minus 2. Today we're going to see two arguments for why this fact is true. In subsequent videos, we will extend this idea to higher dimensions and eventually prove a beautiful result called the Gauss-Binet theorem. Let's get started. We'll start with any arbitrary polygon in the plane. For our first perspective, imagine that you are this pen traveling around the outside of the polygon. Each time you arrive at a vertex, you have to rotate to be in line with the next edge. The angle of this rotation is called the exterior angle at that vertex. After traveling once around the polygon, the pen will have rotated a full 360 degrees. So with this reasoning, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus up to alpha n is 360 degrees, or in radians that's 2 pi. We will just assume this fact from this perspective. We then label the interior angles with beta, beta 1, beta 2, and so on. See that alpha i and beta i are supplementary angles, so their sum is 180 degrees, or pi. This means that when we add up all of the alphas and all of the betas, we should have pi times n. Then we solve for just the sum of the interior angles, just the betas. We have pi times n minus the sum of the alphas, which we have found is 2 pi. So we see that the sum of the interior angles is pi times n minus 2, just like we wanted. But there's another way of thinking about this. Suppose that you didn't believe the sum of the exterior angles is 2 pi, but you're willing to accept the fact about triangles that the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees, or pi. Then we can pick any point on the inside of the polygon and connect all of the vertices to that point. This will divide our polygon into n triangles, one for each side. Because of our assumption about triangles, there is a total angle sum of pi times n for all of the interior angles of the triangles. These are all of the green angles shown. Now we label the angles of the polygon, beta 1 up to beta n. The total triangle angle sum includes these plus the angle at the center point. So the sum of the interior angles of the polygon, the sum of the beta i, is pi times n minus 2 pi. We're going to hold on to that and now add the exterior angles to the picture. We know that the sum over the exterior angles, the alpha i, is the sum over the alphas and the betas minus the sum over the betas. Again, like the last perspective, we note that the alphas and the betas form n sets of supplementary angles, so their total angle sum is pi times n. Then we subtract the expression for the sum of the betas, and we see that the sum of the alphas is 2 pi, just like we wanted. You may notice that I was implicitly assuming that our polygon is convex. These arguments will both work for non-convex polygons as well, but they require a little more finagling, so I'm going to leave that part up to you. All we need moving forward is the part about the convex polygons. We set out to talk about the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. 
that in so doing we found a fact about the exterior angles. Their sum is always 2 pi. Here we are talking about two-dimensional polygons in the plane, but in later videos we will begin to talk about compact surfaces embedded in 3 space. There is an analog to summing up the exterior angles, given by angle deficiencies at the vertices of the surface and we will see that this sum is constant depending on the type of surface that we have. This is the gauss binet theorem. So summing up the angles is one piece that we'll need for the gauss binet theorem, but the other piece has to do with topology. Often nicknamed rubber geometry, topology is concerned with properties of shapes which aren't affected by squishing and stretching. The technical word for squishing and stretching is continuous deformation. So for a topologist, the sphere and the cube would be the same shape. We're going to talk more about topology and something called the Euler characteristic next time. See you soon, and as always, keep exploring.